Welcome to the Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar. During today's webinar, you're able to ask questions of our panelists. The questions and answers along with this webinar broadcast will be published to our YouTube channel a week from today's date. At this time, we'll take you through DWP best practices for advanced troubleshooting, and Juhi Shah will start us off on this content. Over to you, Juhi. Thank you, Greg. As Greg mentioned, my name is Juhi Shah, and I am Senior Technical Support Analyst here at BMC Software. And today, we are going to talk about BMC Digital Workplace Best Practices for Advanced Troubleshooting. In today's agenda, we will quickly walk through overview, performance troubleshooting, notification troubleshooting, and references for self-help. What is Digital Workplace? Digital Workplace is a self-service application which enables business to improve workflow agility, employee productivity, and customer experience by seamlessly connecting through a consumer-like interface. Let's quickly take a look at the architecture. Basically, there are three layers involved. One is the client, second is the digital workplace server itself, and third is the integrated applications with digital workplace. As you can see on the extreme left, the client. As of now, only client we have in newer version is progressive web-based application client, which is basically Angular-based application. We also have a lot of integrations coming from Innovation Suite chatbot that is also considered as a client. We have seen some using integrated features in Digital Workplace with Innovation Suite where one can make use of REST calls. That is all about the client. Coming to the Digital Workplace server, we have a Tomcat service on which both Digital Workplace and Social Service runs. Essentially, you have the main Tomcat server. There is also Digital Workplace database and Social database. Digital Workplace database shows all the information with the activities done on Digital Workplace server. Social Service runs on Tomcat. The only client talking to social is Digital Workplace Server. No other entity is directly talking to social. Next, on the Digital Workplace Server, we have the providers. We have different providers inbuilt within DWP that helps for various integrations with other applications. These applications can be IT service management applications such as SRM, RKM, we have DWP Catalog, Innovation Suite, HRCM. Obviously, each integrated application will have its own database. That's all about the architecture. Let's take a quick look at the key log files used for troubleshooting. In Digital Workplace, as we saw, client is involved. Whenever there is any client type issues, the first log that helps us is the browser F2L logs or the Fiddler logs. These logs basically help us identify slow REST calls or if client has successfully processed the call and if it is the server which is taking lots of delays. That helps us give us an indication to look further DWP log file on the server. Second is the Tomcat localhost access logs. The purpose of this log is to track overall traffic on the server. This log contains the thread number which can be used to correlate data in DWP logs. The most important log file within Digital Workplace application is the DWP log. And basically, the most preferred mode used is the debug mode. This log can help us give information related to error messages or gap in timestamp. And if there is any issue with integrated application around workflows or different areas. Then we have Digital Workplace Catalog Bundle.log. The Bundle.log resides on the Digital Workplace Catalog server. And 
With the help of this lock, we can check for relative error messages and failures, which in turn, we can correlate the timestamps in dwp.log. If we have issues with the integrated applications, such as ITSM, then we will have to look at API SQL filter logging that helps us look at long-running SQL calls as well as errors. As whenever we see issues with performance or other areas, most of the times we see issues are around the integrated application. Performance can happen at any of the layers, be it client, the DWP server itself, or the integrated application. DWP server is slow or integration is the bottleneck. We can help find that with the help of these logs. Digital workplace in itself does very few things. Only thing it does is sending notifications, service health, social features if used. Most of the time it's the integrated applications which are slow or it could be network related issues. Whenever there is performance issue, ITSM is running heavy load or put lot of heavy load on its database. Digital workplace is just a victim. So these logs will basically help us identify which area is causing trouble and correlate the timestamp. Last we have is the social tool log that can help us check errors or slow queries or trace information related to social activities like post, service health, notifications. Let's take a quick look at troubleshooting methodology. Whenever there is an issue related to performance, ask yourself few queries. How many number of users are affected? Is it applicable to specific users or a bunch of users? Were there any recent changes or is it affecting only the newly created users? What are the steps to reproduce? Is there any pattern that is being followed for the affected user? Were there any recent changes done to the environment? Example, a fix or a patch that has been applied or if there have been any patching updates with the OS level? Does the issue impact other applications? Example, integrated applications, that is ITSM. Is this issue reproducible in lower environment? As that helps us to pick logs from the lower server and trace the information. Whenever we have server group set up, that is we have multiple digital workplace server, it's preferred that we bring one of the digital workplace server outside the server group and we point that server to the remedy server itself that is update the database table pointing to that remedy server and take the logs just from that specific server. That makes it pretty easy for troubleshooting. Else we'll have to capture the logs from all the servers. Let's see quickly performance issue and the recommendations. There are few common scenarios we've observed when performance issues are observed. Like earlier I mentioned, sometimes the issue could be on the digital workplace server itself. It could function slow. The possible cause is there is too much load on the server and recommendation is to increase max thread. Default is 200. We can increase these threads in server.xml file. Sometimes digital workplace calls are slow and do not complete. It's observed that the connection between digital workplace and digital workplace catalog are overloaded. In such scenarios, we recommend to increase the value of max total and max per root in connect hyphen DWP properties file. Default is 50. We have seen few performance issues around the active and the inactive events, which basically makes all the calls go slow and these calls are related to approvals. The approval calls in ITSM are too long. In such scenarios, we can check what are the long running queries and if we can tune the same or we can archive approval data or we can increase the search parameter in SRM provider. Next issue observed is around Tomcat. Every application resides on its own Tomcat service. 
sometimes we see tomcat crashes that is due to lack of available memory in such scenarios heap and thread dumps can be useful we can also take a look at basic configuration checklist that is digital workplace communicates with remedy itsm server which is the area where it looks for that integration checkpoint it's basically the configuration parameter table in digital workplace business schema one needs to check if the ar system name port and the password is correct we also need to make sure that the itsm integration patch has been installed on the remedy server to confirm this we can check if all the my it related workflows are present in the developer studio where are the database details stored for digital workplace it's basically the dwp.xml and social.xml in tomcat catlina localhost folder where the digital workplace database details and the password is stored in this slide let's quickly take a look at the integration process now what happens when a user submits a request when a user submits a request digital workplace is looking out for the answers that are filled in once it receives the answers which are filled it then pushes the value to digital workplace once the answers are received by digital workplace it then pushes the record into srd multiple question response form and also creates a record in srm request interface create form basically the srm pluggable provider comes in picture in this area once the answers are located and the records are put to srd multiple question response form the job of digital workplace server is done here and further processing is taken by care by service request management that is remedy workflow continues processing to complete the request and fulfillment creation we have few integration recommendations that is we do have localization which comes in picture and it's always advised to localize the srd in the base language itself instead of language underscore country that is always localize the srds for example if it's in french local use just the language that is fr instead of fr underscore fr the key provider that works with integration between digital workplace and service request management is the srm pluggable provider and in this provider we have few parameters when it comes to aif using aif and digital workplace it's recommended always enable and check the open aif in new window if it's in the same window then click jacking disable has to be set or commented out in if it's opening aif in the same window then make sure click jacking is disabled in the web.xml file for search related issues and improving the performance set search approvals created since last month value in this provider let's take a quick look at the demo using logs to resolve performance issues like we saw in the earlier slides performance issue could be in any of the layers be it client digital workplace server or integration application let's quickly look at what happens on the client side as there are multiple things that happens on the client side one can go to more tools and open the developer tools these are basically called the browser f2l logs make sure that it is capturing the traffic if you notice now the my activity page is loading and the call which is stuck is this call where in the time column you see it is stuck on pending status so this is basically the call which is eventually taking some time for the page to load if you see this is the call which took few seconds for it to complete rest all have completed in few milliseconds this is the call which is taking some time the first thing we do is look at the timing this is the total time taken for this call first area is queuing when rest call is made browser still being single thread application it will put all the calls in the queue 
each tab gets only one thread to run on. This call is then put in a queue. Once it is put in the queue, then it starts the connection. Basically, it's stalled, which starts the connection to the server. If this is not taking much time, that indicates that everything is good on the browser. And next is to look at the DWP log file. Waiting is something which relates to time taken by the server in the backend. So if you see, it's the server in the backend which is taking a long time. And hence, we look at the DWP.log. What is content download? Content download is what server did at the backend. And this can be seen in headers tab in the response. That is this. So typical use case when client is a problem, you'll see queuing takes time. It takes close to 10 to 15 seconds. Once we know that client side area is all good, how do we take a look at the DWP log? The most preferred method to look at the DWP log is with debug mode enabled. One can now enable the debug mode from DWP admin console itself by going to the admin console, click on logging and set the log level to debug. If you see here, it is currently set to debug. There are various other options. This can also be enabled from dwp.xml file, which is actually located in the Tomcat directory. To download the DWP log, we will download it from the browser itself instead going to the server. All we do is considering this user who is logged in is an admin user. If you see inside these log folders, these are the different types of logs. And the most important log is the DWP log, which we are going to download it from here. In the DWP log, we can look for traces. Best way to troubleshoot API calls is reviewing this log file. Search for events or calls. For example, we saw active events was taking time for the page to load. What all information is present in the DWP log? In this log file, we'll basically see the timestamp, the thread ID, the request ID, OP ID is the operation ID. Essentially, each REST call could set operation ID to track the whole request down. Best way to troubleshoot API calls is reviewing this DWP.log file. One can search for events or calls or look for error messages or if it's specific related to approval, search for those keywords in this log file. In the example, we saw the events call took some time. We can search with forward slash events. Here, we can check for the timing and find out which call took a longer time. In few cases, we have seen that loading of approval takes time. Search for approval and find out the approval transaction. Once we have that transaction ID, we can look at the server side API SQL filter logs to see which is the longest running query. If we've identified this is the call which is taking the longest time, we can pick this operation ID and also look for the call in localhost access log. With help of the operation ID, we can check how much time it took overall for the call to complete. In some areas, we have seen loading of questionnaire from catalog also takes time. We can capture this log file and search for errors on that question call. Once we know which call it is, we can also necessarily take actions on the bundle.log. Sometimes we've seen overall services slow. In that case, problem may be with Tomcat. Means it has too many requests to handle. What one can do is Look at the connector info in Tomcat server.xml file. Max thread should be either 1500 or 2000. If it is not present, then there will be only 200 requests running on the server. If there are many concurrent users, it will get queued up. So basically, these are the common areas we can look at that helps us troubleshoot performance related areas.
Let's take a quick look at the social.xml and dwp.xml file, which stores information related to database. Sometimes there could also be issues related to database, and those that information can be figured out from social.xml file and dwp.xml file. When we have performance issues related to approval areas, a quick workaround would be go to the SRM pluggable provider and set the value search approvals created since months to six. This will basically capture all the information for the past six months. That's all we have on the performance area. Over to you, Jeff. Thanks, Julie. So we're going to cover some notification troubleshooting steps that can hopefully help resolve issues that you may come across with the various types of notifications in DWP. So on this screen, we just see some of the notification types, the in-app, email, and push, which would be for a mobile device, and the key components. We're going to talk about them further. Uh, the notification polar, configuration files, and user preferences. So here's a diagram that kind of shows how the notification polar process works in DWP. So some of the key items on here, it waits for 300 seconds in between each run, and that's the default polar cycle. And it's not recommended to change that, especially to a smaller number, as that could impact performance. And we also see that it gets the items for approvals, comments, surveys, and request updates. And each one of these has their own call, API call, and we'll see that in some of the log snippets. So in case something were to go wrong with the approvals piece of the notifications, the rest of them would still work. In previous releases of DWP, this was all kind of controlled by one item in some of the older versions. And if the polar went down, none of the none of the uh, notifications would uh, go out but now these are kind of compartmentalized and each one of the approvals comments surveys and request updates has their own uh, thread or api call that gets the data once those are collected the user preferences are checked to determine what type of notification a person will receive or if they'll receive one at all based on the type of event and then the notifications are sent and essentially the process starts over and that process will continue until you know the tomcat process is stopped so that's a little overview of how the notification polar works okay so some of the key configuration file settings so in the connect properties file the social server port needs to match the port value from the server XML file that's down in the bottom section, the, it's usually the very bottom section of the server XML file, that and that needs to match. And usually the social server host and connector address, those are always set by default, and those would never change. I've seen instances where the port numbers have been different, and that can cause a problem, as we'll see uh, in the demo, where those values mismatch causes an issue for notifications. All right, master server equals true. If you've got a single server, you don't need to have master server set. It's going to already default to being true. But if you're in a server group, you need to have master server set on a single server, set it to true, and the other servers in the group, it needs to be set to false. That's something to keep in mind because if multiple ones are set to true, the notifications are not going to work properly. All right, we just saw the diagram on the notification polar. Obviously, that enabled needs to be set to true. And the in-app notification feature, that needs to be enabled as well. If that's not enabled, in-app notifications are not going to take place. And these two files are going to exist in the Tomcat directory structure. OK, so we're going to go through some troubleshooting for the various types of notifications. So for the in-app notifications, and we see here what they're linked to, approvals, comments, broadcast surveys, you want to check the user preference record to make sure that the user has opted in to get this type of notification based on what it's coming for, whether it be an approval type, whether they're an alternate or you know, comments on a request. And make sure that the user has some correct preferences selected. 
okay, so browser logging, F12 logging is going to be key here to see if this notification call returns an HTTP 200. Because if it doesn't return a 200, then we've got some kind of connectivity issue that needs to be investigated further. And we also need to ensure the time on the ITSM and DWP servers is in sync. And, and by that means that they're not, you know, hours apart, a, a second or so, a minute or so may not make any difference, but a long gap in here, we have seen that cause issues in the past. So if those don't provide anything, we'll always want to check the DWP log and social two log for error messages on notification calls. Also in debug mode, the DWP log will show the notification thread and the polling for the various types of items. And that's something we're going to cover a little bit later. For email notifications, and there we see what they're part of as well. We want to validate the configuration details in the connect properties file. Those are going to be at the top, that email server information that all has to be valid or the, the notifications are not going to be sent. And once again, we want to check the user preferences to make sure the person is set up to get email on the various items. And you want to check their email address to make sure it's valid. Another key item to check is a backend URL in the admin console on the configuration page under email. That has to have a value pointing to the DWP server that has to be correct. If it's not, emails will not be sent. You can check the DWP log for error messages on notification calls and also debug logging will show additional calls for the email messages as far as them being sent. And we'll see a, a screenshot capture of one of those here in a little bit. And trace logging, if you turn on trace logging, it will actually show the email being constructed in the log. So if you're concerned about the text in an email, it doesn't it match with what you expect. Trace logging, when the email is sent, will show the assembly of the email message. For push notifications, we want to make sure there is a device token that's been configured. We also want to, once again, check user preferences. And you can check the DWP log for calls containing APNS, which is short for Apple Push Notification Service, to see if there are any issues with those. And as of the 31st of March of this year, we're not going to support the legacy binary protocol. And I think if you upgrade to at least DWP 2002, I believe it's a 01 or 02, you'll be covered there. So if that's something that you make use of, you need to make sure and upgrade prior to March 31st of this year. All right, so here are some of the key items that you could look for in a DWP log. And most of these are gonna be occurring, like I mentioned before, when you're in debug mode. So for the surveys, this is one of the polars, I guess you call it, for the surveys. And we see that it's gonna retrieve surveys created since essentially the last timestamp that the polar ran. And, it, and that's another thing that could be done in the logging as well kind of like in an ITSM log where you can pull out items by thread ID and the RPC ID. We see here in this log next to the timestamp on the left, there's a notification dash 18. So you could essentially pull out anything with notification dash in your logging and search for the notification threads to see what was going on in the logs. Okay, so here is the email that is sent. As I mentioned, trace logging will show the email itself getting constructed, but this is the subject and the address sent to. So in this snippet here, we see the subject line and we see the user that was sent to. So if you wanted to check if somebody's email address was correct, you could just, you'd see it here in the log if you had debug turned on, in addition to checking it in DWP itself. So some additional ones for the approvals. Okay, so this IM approval service processes approvals generated since the last polling cycle. So essentially it's searching for approvals that have been approved, it says since a certain time. So essentially that's gonna run, you know, every time the, the notification polar runs, it's gonna check for approvals. And then 
we see that this is going to post them. The approval creation publisher is going to post those to the in-app notifications. And we see there that it's processing the service request approval notifications. All right, now we're going to do a demo where we use logs to help resolve in-app and email notification issues. Okay, so this in this demo, we're going to go through a few scenarios where you can uh, use the methods that I mentioned in some of the previous slides to help resolve uh, notification issues in DWP. So uh, the background on this, I had a user submit a request that requires approval and the user I'm logging in as will be the approver. And here's the request here, it's this 534, but I don't see a bell notification for it, an in-app notification for it. So I turned on F12. That was something I had mentioned in one of the previous slides. And we wanted to look for the activity stream on the notifications. And there's our notification item in the network tab. And we see that it got back a 500. So that clearly tells us there was some sort of a problem with it. So if I drill into that and we look at the response, it says, look at the application error logs for details. And it says the server encountered an internal error, error connection problem. Okay, so first thing that I would do then is we can go check out the DWP log file. And I have that in debug mode. And if we... For something like that, I would probably search for error. And here's an issue right here. I think this definitely could be the crux of our problem here. It says connection refused to connect to 9002, which is our social uh, port and notification. So basically, we're not going to get any notifications email and app otherwise based on this refuse to connect so let's go check some of the config files that we had talked about so if we go to the external conf and look at connect dwp properties okay so here's our social server port 9002 host is a local host like i had mentioned previously in the slides and our notification polar is enabled and the and the comments are enabled as well and there's our default polling cycle so this file looks good so let's check out the other file that i'd mentioned the server xml file and the section we want to check on this with regard to notifications and social as i mentioned it's not the bottom of the file so it's this connector down at the very bottom and this appears to be a problem right here we've got the correct address which is essentially local host but the port is 9001 which that is not correct it doesn't match so we need to make that 9002 so what we'll do is we'll save that and then i'm going to go ahead and restart tomcat process All right, so DWP is back up now. Let's clear our F12 page there, F12 logging, and log back in again. Let's type this password. And we see that we have our bell notifications are appearing there again, which is a good sign. And the notifications call did return to 200. So that, so that takes care of that one scenario where the config file values impacted notifications uh, from appearing. Okay, so now that that's been corrected, I just, as that other user, uh, submitted another request that needs approval. Okay, so we see the approval here in active events, and we see it in the in-app the in notifications. 
If I check my email notifications, I've got it there as well. So basically all the notifications came through when that uh, port number was resolved. So if we want to go back in the log here and look at some of the pieces that I had mentioned in the slides, we can find those real quick. So here's the line that it says email with subject and the user who it was sent to. And then here's another one as well that ties into the F12 logging and the, the snippet that I mentioned in the presentation. The activity stream notifications, that returned to 200. And I would guess that if we look before when we had the problem, there it is right there. That's when we had the problem. We got a 500 back from that. So that told us there was something wrong there. So those items sync up as far as the error messages. And then when we resolve it, we get a 200. So the other thing on notifications to keep track of that I'd mentioned is the preferences. So if we're going to look at my preferences for the approvals, this is these are out of the box settings. So you're going to get notified when it's waiting for your approval and any messages on approval request. If you're an alternate, you're not going to get notified out of the box. So you would need to enable that as well. Also, email is not enabled out of the box for approval notifications. It's just a put, uh, I'm sorry, an in-app notification. The push notifications obviously would be something you do, need to enable as well if that's something you want to see on approvals. In that approval email, if we go back and look at it, this is another key item that I mentioned. Let's just look at the admin console real quick. We're going we're gonna to look at the email settings here. This backend URL. This backend URL is an important setting. If you have to have a value in there. If you don't have a value in there, you will get an error that the email could not be formatted or, or sent. So you won't get any kind of email notification. And secondly, if there's a problem where you've got, you know, somebody made a mistake and they don't have the correct port number here, this will result in an error if somebody goes to view the details of a request from the email. This is kind of like, I guess you would say, the web URL in a remedy email. If you don't have the correct, uh, I don't know what that setting is in server information, but it's a default web path, I believe. If you don't have the correct setting there, that can impact notifications when people click on the URLs in them. And I had one yesterday. Okay, so let me find the email, the one that has the incorrect port number in it. I think it might be this one. Yeah, this has an incorrect port that I, I entered incorrectly on purpose just to show the example of what would happen. So if, if, if you've got a bad value in that web URL in DWP in the backend URL, and somebody clicks view details on this request, you will see I've got a port number there that's incorrect. I've got a port number of 9003. So that would need to be 9000. And then when we get logged in, we could see the details of the request which is the one we're expecting to see. There it is, 532, and that was the one there. So that backend URL is a key item that has to be entered for emails. Okay, so in this scenario, I had a request that I was wanting to get completed. I had you know, pinged the person who was working on it, asked them what was going on, and they said it had been completed. And I didn't get notified of that completion. So if I come here, it is this request. It definitely got completed, but I didn't get notified that it got completed. I don't have a status change or any kind of in-app notification letting me know that it got completed. So we know now that the notifications are working since we resolved it for the other issues. So the, the, other, the, the main thing we want to do here is check preferences because there's preferences for various settings. We talked about approvals and for requests, I don't have the completed box checked. So that's the reason why I didn't get notified on that completion. 
So also another thing we might want to check here as well is just a, this information is stored in the database. So essentially, if we come in and look at the user preferences table, there's a PK value, which is essentially like an ID value, and it's tied to each ID. So I believe Alan is, his user login ID is Alan. Where is it? Right there. And so he's on the first row. So his PK is one. So if we come into this, the table, business notification preferences, and we would look for user preferences PK, all the values of one. And if we look at request, completed let me refresh this because that's a stale view of that i believe based on what we're seeing here yes we see that request completed is set to false which means that it's not enabled and i'm not going to get those so then let's go ahead and turn these back on and we can just check the database again real quick and now we see completed is true so I don't believe I'm going to get it for that request that because the action already has taken place on that one. So see if I have another one here. We'll have the user complete another request. And this is for five request 522. I'm going to go ahead and have this user complete it. OK, so for the status change events, there is not an in-app notification for that. So I incorrectly clicked on that earlier. We're not going to see one for the request status change. And that's where that one page I mentioned that the documentation is nice to see because it gives you a, a depiction of what event is going to trigger what type of notification. So for the completed status update, I should be checking for an email now that we've enabled that one. I didn't get it on this request 528, but I should get one. And there we see it. It's right there on request 522. We now have the status completed. And this is the page I was talking about right here. We see the, the depiction of what type of event triggers what type of notification. So that's a very handy page to have. All right, now that the demo is done, let's move on. So we've got troubleshooting guides for DWP. And as you see here, they're gonna be on the main documentation page on the left-hand side, there'll be a troubleshooting tab and underneath that there'll be various guides for many different scenarios in DWP where we have items in there to help you troubleshoot your own issues. So let's look at a few troubleshooting scenarios. Okay so this one kind of goes along with what we're seeing here the in-app notifications are not being received by users. So there is an error in the social two log and it says it can't parse a notification with a certain PK value. So the cause of this is a PK values are out of sequ sequence in the S2 DB tables. Now PK value is kind of like the next ID value in Remedy. So I've seen this before where databases have been restored, uh, various other, usually don't see this on a new install. It would be a, a usually a restore thing where the Database restore caused these PK values to get out of sync. So we have a knowledge article on that, and we need to use SQL queries to reset those max PK values so that when the insert tries to insert them to the social database, they're successful. And once those get resolved, the in-app notifications will be received. Okay, so here's another issue where we have AIFs not opening in DWP, and you're getting a connection refused. This is usually occurring when you have the AIF set to open in the same window. And the cause is that the click jacking is enabled in the web.xml. So there's no setting for it in the file. So if it's not in there, it's set to, it's turned on. So I came across this recently where someone had upgraded the mid-tier and the mid-tier backed up the original web XML and put a default one down. So the click jacking setting was in, a, in essence turned on. So we had to go disable it again. And we have a knowledge article out there on what you do to update the web XML to disable click jacking so that the AIFs will open up in the same window in DWP. Okay, so here are some key references. We have our link, our link to the troubleshooting guides, which I mentioned before. And 
there's a knowledge article here as well on troubleshooting all types of notification issues within DWP, which covers some of the information that we've talked about here. And we also have an advanced troubleshooting knowledge article for DWP in general that talks about logs, config files, and various other items to help you resolve your own issues with DWP. And a key documentation page is a status update and notification configuration page. That's got a nice little uh, table on it that lets you know what type of event triggers a certain type of notification in DWP. So if you're expecting an, an email for a certain type of event, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to confirm if you, if you should be expecting one for that in DWP. All right, just to summarize, we just talked about the overview of DWP architecture and the notification process. We covered uh, the DWP SRM integration process, and we covered log files for troubleshooting various types of issues in DWP performance as well as in DWP notifications. So I hope everybody found this helpful. Back over to you, Greg. Thank you. And now I'll take us through the self-help in contacting BMC. The YouTube channel where this webinar will be posted is listed here. It contains past webinars as well as a rich set of how-to videos. The Connect with BMC Helix ITSM and Remedy webinar schedule is available at this community's link. And the Hot Off the Press newsletter for trending information is available at this community's post. As always, contacting technical support via web, phone, email, and these social channels is available. At this time, that will conclude this webinar. Thank you for attending.